So, in this lecture, I'm going to discuss D'Alembert's principle. So, let me recall uh, principle of virtual work. So, in principle of virtual work, we found that virtual work done will be zero. And the system is in equilibrium when we talk about the principle of virtual work. So in principle of virtual work, the system is in equilibrium. The system is in equilibrium. That means uh, this is a problem of statics. Right? But in physics, we generally deal with the system which is in motion. That means uh, we have to deal with the problems of uh, dynamics. So in general, we have to deal with deal with problems the system is in motion is in motion when and when the system is in motion what does that mean that means it's a problem of dynamics it's a problem of dynamics So, now what we will do in this case, we will extend the principle of virtual work so that it is valid for the problem of dynamics, right? So, our motive or we require a new idea that means or uh, we have we want to extend extend the principle of virtual work the principle of virtual work and the principle of virtual work We want to extend the principle of virtual work and uh, which is valid for for the problems of dynamics, which is valid for problems of dynamics, right? So this is our objective. And this new formulation is known as T. Lambert's principle. So, for this, let us proceed as follows. So for this, let, let us consider a system of n particles. So we are having n particles and let mi be the mass of the ith particle. And ri, it be its coordinate. It's a coordinate of ith particle. Therefore, m r r i dot be the momentum of this ith particle, right? And this r is i is a vector quantity that we have to keep in mind. I'm not putting vector over it, so but. Uh, you have to keep in mind that force and this all other things that are i or the momentum these all are the vector quantities so let fi 
R i, it will be the total force. acting on the ith particle then if it is the total force acting on the ith particle and this force causes a rate of change of momentum so then according to Newton's equation of motion, we can write down that the rate of change of momentum is equal to the net force applied on the ith particle. Because this force causing change in the momentum in the ith particle, this is simply Newton's law. And this is m i r i double dot is equal to f of i. This is basically a dynamical problem. If I do little algebra or uh, apply some mathematical trick in such a manner, Fi will be here. And if I bring this towards that side, then it will become Mi Ri double dot plus, and this will be equal to zero. And if I consider these two things and let me recall m i r i double dot this is basically the effective force this is the effective force and this is the total force acting on the system and if i recall this m i r i double dot then this is basically the reverse effective force This is the reverse effective. So thus this reverse effective force and the total external force these two when they put together then the resultant will become zero. That means the ith particle under the combined application of under the combined application of reverse effective force that is m i r i double dot and total external force f i It's in equilibrium so if it is in equilibrium that means our dynamical problem problem reduced to problem of statics And if it will become a problem of statics, that means principle of virtual work applies to it. So that means M 
m i r i double dot plus f i and summation over i. Now we are considering all particle and delta r is the virtual displacement and this must be equal to zero. But as I know that or as we know that f i is equal to f i applied plus f i c then if I use this value here it is the applied force and it is the constraint force and uh, if I put all these values here m i r i double dot plus f i applied plus f i c delta r i must be equal to 0 but f i c into delta r i this must be equal to 0 because constraint force do not perform any virtual work f i c do not perform any virtual work. So that means this term can be ignored keeping this in mind and this is basically change of momentum. So I can write down this as Ti with negative sign plus Fi applied into delta r i where i is a summation it varies from 1 to n and this is equal to 0. Now this equation which we are getting this equation it represents the principle of uh, sorry it represents the D'Alembert's principle Thus, we have extended the idea of virtual work or the principle of virtual work to the dynamical system and this representation is known as the Allen-Bosch principle. So that is all for uh, this lecture and in the next lecture I will talk about uh, Lagrange's equation of motion where I will derive Lagrange's equation of motion from the Allen-Bosch principle. That is it.